I'm Bridget from Building Bridget. I'm a full-time furniture flipper. And today I'm gonna show you how I turned this dresser into this. I got this dresser for $10 from a local garage sale over a year ago, and it's been sitting in my garage ever since as kind of a catch-all workstation. It's been hiding for way too long though, so I decided to get to work. It's a Cushman Colonial Collection solid wood dresser. It has great bones, but it needs a lot of work. I will definitely be replacing this hardware, so I started by removing and tossing them. Next, I gave it a good cleaning with crud cutter and used a toothbrush to get in all these detailed areas. It's been sitting collecting dust in my garage for a while now, so I wanna make sure it's totally clean before I move on. Next, I started sanding. I often don't have a plan for a piece until I start sanding and see what quality of wood I'm working with. In this case, the top had a ton of discoloration and lots of hairline cracks throughout, which pushed me to deciding to paint it. I did some repairs on this drawer that had the bottom chipping off and clamped it down to set. Next, I got out my Bondo and used it for all the cracks in the top and the drawers. I opted for Bondo rather than standard wood filler here because Bondo is more heavy duty and will do a better job at keeping those cracks filled and not reopening over time. There were some missing details that I also used my Bondo to rebuild. Next, I moved on to my standard wood filler for all the minor nicks and dings. I like using DAP plastic wood for this. Caulk isn't always something you see in furniture flipping, but it adds such a professional touch. I'm using DAP paintable caulk here to fill in any gaps in the trim. I did another round of sanding once all the filler had dried and then moved on to the base. Old bases are a huge culprit for dating the overall look of a piece, and a lot of times they're not hard to remove. In this case, it was held on by several screws across the bottom and some light glue. Just a tap with my hammer and it came right off, giving this nice sleek base that I can now add new legs onto. My friend Adiba used these bamboo bathroom masks to transform a nightstand set and I had to give it a try. I got the bamboo on Amazon and started by removing this outer lining and then measured and cut it to the size of my drawer fronts. I know this looks weird, but my circular saw ended up splintering the bamboo a ton and my miter shears wouldn't get through it. So I tried a chisel and hammer to cut through one piece at a time and it worked. I cut through the backing and then just decided to pull it all off. Next, I used Gorilla Glue all over the back, flipped it over, and pressed it down on the drawer fronts. In retrospect, I would have spread the glue around the back of the mat before flipping it over, because I did have to pick out some glue bubbles with the toothpick afterwards. Once that dried, I sanded down the fronts and the edges to get the mat totally flush with the drawer edges. I really wanted the transition from the mat to the drawer fronts to be totally seamless, so I filled with Bondo and then sanded that all down smooth. Next, I gave everything a good wipe down and took to the spray tent. I'm using Zinsser's 123 spray primer because it's so fast and saves me a ton of time. I always do a round of wood filling after priming because the white surface makes any imperfections way easier to spot and deal with. I wasn't happy with how much wood grain texture was showing through on the top, so I decided to grain fill the whole top with watered down wood filler, and then I sanded it down once it was dry. If you do this, just be sure to use a vacuum and a dry rag to wipe it down afterwards, since a wet rag will activate the wood filler and wipe away some of your grain filling work. I'm using this beautiful creamy white color that I got from the Oops Paint section at Home Depot. They're mist tints that are sold for hella cheap. This whole gallon was only $9. I like pouring it into a cup to mix in the appropriate amount of water. And I'm sorry, I don't use a formula. I just eyeball it until it looks about like this. I filtered my paint and was ready to start spraying. I always test spray to check the pattern and make setting adjustments. Then I move on to spraying my piece. In between coats, I clean off the nozzle with a toothpick and a paper towel and then cover it with a Ziploc bag and a rubber band around it to keep it airtight. I did notice some of the gaps between the slats were bugging me, so I did a couple of rounds of painting with an artist brush and just that little extra paint really helped fill up those gaps to be more uniform. I always recommend sanding between coats. Here, I'm using a super fine 400 grit. Next up is top coating. I've been really enjoying tinting my top coat with my paint color. This just gives me some added color coverage and makes sure my finish doesn't end up streaky at all. And that way I can just add my top coat directly into my leftover paint. I'm using Bear's water-based polyurethane here. And as always, I always make sure to filter it into my paint coat. I did a couple coats of the poly and then moved on to the legs. These are from Amazon and they come really glossy yellowy gold, which is not what I'm looking for. So I like to spray them with Rust-Oleum's metallic gold before attaching them. 
Next up, I measured hardware holes. This little blue stencil comes in super handy for this, and I always tape before drilling because it helps prevent splintering. I added new hardware from Amazon and attached the new legs. I like to use a Sharpie to mark where the screws will need to go and then pre-drill right on those Sharpie spots. And my final touch was Howard's Feed and Wax. This stuff works so well on drawer glides to make them glide super smoothly. I also use it all over the inside and the sides of the drawers to rehydrate the wood. And without further ado, this is how this dresser turned out. I think it is so sleek and modern now, and I'm obsessed with this bamboo mat look. I'll definitely be trying it again. I hope you liked this makeover. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more clips. Isn't it crazy how a little creativity and a lot of hard work can turn something like this into this?